pre-assessment, we'll ask you lots of questions about your medical health, um, have a chat with you about what to expect when you come in and start you thinking about when you're going home and sort of making plans for your discharge as well. Keep yourself as active as possible um, because the stronger you are before you come in, the easier your recovery is going to be. Um, we know that's hard when arthritis is bad, um, but anything that you can do, whether it's walking up in a swimming pool, whether it's doing the exercises for your knee or your hip, whatever you can do will help you in your recovery afterwards. It's a good chance that you're going to be on crutches for a few weeks after the operation, so think about how you're going to move around the house um, and make arrangements for your responsibilities if, uh, if you can. Move any clutter, any things that might be trip hazards such as low furniture or rugs, things like that. Um, I would try to put anything that you need around waist height so that you don't have to reach up too high or too low for it. Anything to make life easier in these early weeks. Think about how you're going to move things around the house if you need to. Um, some people have a little a mini rucksack or a bum bag to move smaller items around the house. Make sure that you bring loose clothing, um, things that are easy to put on, um, baggy trousers or loose dresses around knee length are perfect. Um, think about footwear, so either um, supportive slippers or shoes that are easy to put on and have got a bit of room in them so that if your, your feet swell then um, you're still able to get them on with relative ease. When you do come in for your operation, they come to the main reception desk, let them know your name and one of the ward administrators will come down and take you up to your room. The uh, healthcare assistant normally then comes in, they're wearing green, like a light green, um, and they'll take your blood pressure and normally fit you for some TED stockings just to prevent you from getting any clots in your legs. The nurse then comes in um, and will go through the uh, admission. The nurse go through a lot of paperwork for you. They will tell you what's going to happen from start to finish in terms of the routine uh, for pre and post-op. After the nurse leaves, you might see the pharmacist the pharmacist who go through your medication. I'm really sorry, there's going to be a lot of repetition because the pharmacist will check your medication again, the nurse would have checked your medication, so they will, it's just for safety precaution to make sure that we capture everything. The anaesthetist will discuss what type of anaesthetic that you haven't done as well. Sometimes it is a full general anaesthetic, you put to sleep. Other times for some of the hip and knee replacements, you will have what we call a spinal anaesthetic and they always give you sedation drugs so you are very relaxed. And then other people have local anaesthetics but the anaesthetist will discuss that and decide between you both which is best for you. After the anaesthetist, the, the consultant will also come in. Uh, they will go through the procedure so you need to ask any questions if you still have any. If not, then you're happy to go through the procedure. You sign a consent form. Getting out of bed, so you need to make sure that you're pain free first normally and that you've had something to eat and drink. So if you've had something to eat and drink and you feel okay, then it'll be, it'll be okay to get out of bed. Those who have had orthopaedic surgery will like to just take a blood pressure beforehand if it's your first time, just making sure that it's at a normal level for us to be able to get you up. Physiotherapy will also be able to help you with getting out of bed as well, along with the nurses. Please, I must stress, do not get out of bed by yourself. Always use your call bell. So the physio will come round the morning after surgery, but if you've had an early morning operation you might be seen later on that day, afternoon or evening by the physio. As soon as your physio thinks that you're safe to walk around the ward with your walking aids, and we will encourage you to do so, it's really good for your recovery to walk regularly, and good for your circulation and good for your muscle strength as well. After the surgery it's important that you um, keep on top of pain relief, that's the key really to getting the, the, the best out of your physio and being able to move around as comfortably as you can. Um, so pain relief is important, it's really important that you drink plenty and keep yourself well hydrated um, and that you eat as much as you can as well. It's really important that you buzz us when you need to. If you're not feeling confident to do something, it's really important that you ask one of us to be there. It's important that you have somebody around.
the key to getting out the bed is to get your bottom to the edge first. So move your, bend your other leg up, and move your bottom to the edge of the bed, and then slowly drop your legs around and bring your torso up and around at the same time. To get back on the bed, if you sit down first and then shuffle your bottom as far back as you can, once your legs supported by the bed, then you can start to step your legs around. So it's really important to do your exercises to regain your movement as soon as possible after the operation and you should try to work on your knee bend and getting your knee as fully straight as possible from the outset. Your physio will show you some exercises to get your movement back and also to help to work the muscles that support your new knee when you're on the ward and you can continue these at home. We'll then follow you up in outpatient physiotherapy a few weeks after the operation and we will progress these when you're ready. It can take up to 12 weeks or more to get full movement back but you can start working on the knee bend and getting it as straight as possible as soon as possible. We advise that you move slowly and in a way that you can control so avoid any sudden or jerky movements. You'll probably feel more comfortable if you move in one direction at any one time. Most people don't need any specialist equipment after a knee replacement other than the walking aids that you'll be given by your physiotherapist on the ward. Um, if you do think that there's something that you might need to help make life easier then please discuss this with your pre-assessment nurse or give the physio department a ring before you come into hospital. So it's normal for knees to be very swollen and often bruised after the operation and this can often peak at about the first week after surgery so it's really important that between walks and exercises that you sit with your legs well elevated and try and get your feet and ankles as high as possible to allow the swelling to drain. Ice can be really comfortable as well so um, having packs of frozen peas or frozen vegetables in the freezer ready for when you get home is a really good idea. We normally recommend that you pop them into a pillowcase and pop them onto your knee for about 20 minutes at a time and that can really help to make your knee feel easier and help with swelling. Try to avoid resting with a pillow or towel underneath your knee because this can cause the structures at the back of the knee to feel tight. So if you're sitting with your legs elevated, if you pop some pillows under your feet or ankles, then that will be the better way to help with elevation. It's important to keep clean. The dressings will be waterproof, but will come off if they're soaked. So we advise that you don't bathe for the first few weeks after the surgery until the wounds are fully healed and the dressings are removed. If you have stairs at home, we'll practice these before you go home. Um, if you have a handrail, that always makes life a little bit easier, but we can show you without if you don't have one at home. So we teach you to go up the stairs using your stronger or non-operated leg. So you will step up with your better leg first, then follow with your operated leg and then the crutch. Coming back down the stairs, we show you to put the crutch down first, followed by your operated leg and then your better leg. I'd recommend that you sit in the front passenger seat of the car, get whoever's driving to move the seat as far back as you can in the seat well and recline the seat back a little bit to give you a little bit more space. You then line yourself up to the car, step your operated leg forward and lower yourself down to sit gently. Once you're sitting, you can then slowly turn around. So most people stay one to two nights and you'll go home as soon as you're safe and well enough to do so. As soon as you're medically well and you can get yourself up and about and dressed, we need to know that you're confident and safe to go home and a lot of it will depend on your setup at home and how well prepared you are. 
Um, as soon as you are medically well, you're able to get yourself up and dressed and move around comfortably, um, and the physios are happy, then you'll be able to go home. So you'll have follow-up physio two to three weeks after your operation and that will be at one of the closest Nuffield Health sites to where you live. Rest is just as important as activity in the first few weeks so it's important that you do little and often. So we advise that you get up and do something active every hour, whether that's a walk or doing your exercises or moving around and then try to rest in between. 